Hello, I am back. I just wanted to give a little update and just let you all know what happened with the egg retrieval or what was the first batch of results. So my clinic, the way that they work is they only give updates on day one and updates on day five. So my nurse called on Tuesday and let us know that out of the 14 eggs retrieved that 10 were mature and 10 fertilized, which I was very, very happy to hear. I know like IVF numbers, I know how quickly things could drop off. So like I'm still worried <laughs> to high heaven. I'm hoping everything goes okay though. I'm just trying to be like realistic because I know like how quickly those numbers can dwindle. So I'm just trying to be uh, cautiously optimistic, I guess. Is that the right word to say? I would rather be like pleasantly surprised than be like mentally distraught. I've dealt with enough sad things this year. <laughs> But um, other than that, I just gotta say like the whole IVF process is like a mental, ugh, it's like a mental tornado. There's so much waiting. There's so much waiting. It's so stressful. Power to all these women who do this, like and have done this more than once. It's just like, first you're waiting to find out when your cycle's gonna start. Then you're waiting to see if your medication's working. Then you're waiting to see how many follicles you have. Then you're waiting to see how many follicles grow. Then you're waiting to see how high your estrogen is, and you're waiting to see when your egg retri retrieval will be and when you're gonna trigger. And then you're waiting to see how many eggs you retrieved and how many were mature and how many fertilized. Then you're waiting to see how many made it to day five. Then you're waiting to see how many are PGT normal if you're doing that. And it's just like, I can't, I can't. There's too much mental processing for me. I just like wish I could like wake up on day five already just so I know, like so I can mentally prepare. But like I said, I'm, I'm not being, I'm trying to be like a pessimist about it just cause I think like, that way I don't have my hopes up for anything and I'm either pleasantly surprised or I'm just like, oh, well, that's what I expected. But anyway, um, the process wasn't that bad. Uh, like the stim process wasn't that bad. I didn't feel much of any side effects like during stimming at all. Like I didn't even feel bloating. I did not feel bloated during stimming as much. Towards the end, I started to get bloated, like towards the last couple of days, but the it wasn't that bad in the beginning. But the one effect, side effect that I did have was insomnia. Like I don't know if anyone else had that, but I could not sleep. And I don't know if it's because I was like doing stims later at night, but I like, I couldn't sleep at all. But then after egg retrieval, my God, my stomach is still bloated, but it, it was humong it was bigger than it was when I was 22 weeks pregnant. Like, I, I don't even know, it's heavy. It's like hard to walk around, it's like so much fluid. And I know I don't have the OHSS. It just bloat, <laughs> it's just so much. I just spit, I don't see that. It's just so much bloat, so much bloat. Um, but like during the stims process, I did have like concerns, like certain concerns. My main one was like uh, my cycle day. Like I started stims on cycle day six and I haven't, I've yet to, talked to someone who also started stims on cycle day six. Um, I was estrogen priming, so I'm, I guess it didn't matter when I started. It's just, I was so used to seeing everyone else start on like cycle day three, cycle day four, that it just was a little bit jarring to me that I was starting on cycle day six. And it started my little worry wart wheels to be churning. Um, another thing was I was definitely a slow responder. Definitely. I should like, I, every time I went in for a scan, I had less and less follicles every single time. Like my baseline from to, to my next scan, I lost follicles to then the next scan. I lost follicles. It wasn't until like towards the end when my follicles started growing and picking up and then where I gained a few follicles. But the thing is, is that like the follicles I gained were all like under 10. So I started with like 15 and by my last monitoring appointment, I had a total of 19, but only 11 were measurable. And I think like two or three were only like 11 to 13. So I was definitely a slow responder. Um, and when they told me that they retrieved 14, I was surprised because I thought they were only gonna retrieve like 11, but the ones that were mature was like 10. So it makes sense. But it was just like a real mental like war for me because it was just so much worrying. and. It, and if I go through this again, I'm like not gonna allow myself to care about how many follicles are there or like what's going on because you can't control it anyway. Like why bother your mind with worrying when it's completely out of your control, you know? But I do recommend if you have any concerns after your first cycle, talking to your, your doctor about it before starting again. 
but that's your doctor's job is to like move medications around and fix things but it is so so stressful and i still feel like poo like i feel like a gigantic turd right now that doesn't want to move and all i want is a croissant that's all i want i keep thinking about it but i know if i have it i'm gonna feel like poop but i really don't care at this point i'll sacrifice that because i already feel like poop and the menth and the little tiny dopamine high I'll get from having my delicious croissant will be totally worth it. So I'm gonna have a croissant. <laughs> As for everything and how it went so far, it went good. If this will be a successful cycle or not, that's to be determined. I do not know yet. Like I said, I had 10 fertilized, but it could end up not leading to anything. It's just how IVF works. It's a lot like nature might fertilize but it might not turn into into a blast so you just gotta wait and see and i'll keep you guys posted so you'll see me when i know hopefully it's good news <laughs> hopefully my cat doesn't have a heart attack because the roofers are like freaking him out having like a crisis it's like it's like you you would think he's in a horror movie and that there's like a serial killer that's about to kill him and that he's like in a constant state of like a uh, flight that, that's my cat right now because the roofers so I'm gonna go give him some cuddles and make sure he's okay. And I will update you guys when I hear again. So until then, bye.